Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about yet another incredible discovery that was just announced a few hours ago from when I'm making this video. It seems that one of the closest known stars to us, Tea Garden Star, may actually have two Earth-like terrestrial exoplanets around it. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Okay, before we start, um, I need to get this out of the way. This is still uh, an unconfirmed discovery by a single team, but their actual paper that you can find in the description below goes through a lot of detail to show that it's very likely an actual discovery of two terrestrial planets. And so even though it's an unconfirmed discovery, the method of detection was very precise, so it's very likely that those planets are real. Now, here we're looking at 100 nearest stars to us. You'll notice Alpha Centauri is right there. Uh, a few more stars you may know are also here, like for example the famous uh, Ross 128, the Captain star, and so on. But the one we're interested in is actually very difficult to see, even with a very very large telescope. It's this right here, it's called Tea Garden Star, named after its discoverer and his team. And this particular star, if you were to look at it, would be extremely dim. This is what's known as an ultra-cool dwarf. Not because it's cool, but because it's actually really cold. At least for a star, because the temperature here is roughly around 2700 degrees Kelvin. This is about half of the temperature on the surface of the sun. And because of this, um, this star is very difficult to see um, in the night skies. We've discovered it completely by accident um, back in 2003, when we were actually looking for asteroids. And what we saw was this. You can kind of see the motion right there in the middle of the screen. This little speckle of light right here, that's the Tea Garden star. It's one of the fastest moving across the night skies. And um, because of this, it was detected by an asteroid survey that was supposed to discover asteroids. But by accident, we discovered this little star. It's extremely dim. It's very, very difficult to detect with um, pretty much any major telescope, except for some really, really sensitive ones. And until 2009, we weren't even sure how close it was. And turns out it's roughly around 12 and a half light years away from planet Earth. And so this really dim, very, very small star um, that's roughly around 8% the mass of the sun is something that was um, really interesting to this team of scientists from Germany, whose paper you can find in the description. And they were essentially looking at it for approximately three years using the Color Auto Observatory, and specifically um, a device known as Carmenis. The device that was installed roughly around three to four years ago to essentially help look for exoplanets, specifically by using a method known as the uh, radial velocity method. Now, um, the way this method works is actually kind of simple. And let me use our own solar system to demonstrate this. So here's the sun, and you'll notice that our sun is actually moving around in the middle, it's not really staying still. So something is actually causing it to move around a little bit. That something, for the most part, is Jupiter. Jupiter is causing our sun to have a kind of a orbital wobble that is detectable if you look at it long enough using a very sensitive telescope. So in other words, uh, a typical planet, as it orbits around the star, will actually cause that star to wobble. And this wobble um, can be detected using telescopes specifically designed for this by using the red shifting and the blue shifting of the light and uh, by looking at how periodic this happens. So this is roughly how they were able to discover these two planets and their um, study is actually very detailed in explaining how accurate it was and also in explaining the periodicity of these detections. So in other words, they weren't really looking at the star directly and trying to see the shadow of the planet pass in front of it. Instead, they used the actual wobble of the star itself to try to detect the planets. And they looked at the star for roughly around three years and detected two very easily observable periodic um, objects that seemed planetary whose mass they were able to determine quite accurately. And the mass here um, was surprisingly very similar to the mass of planet Earth. Now, um, this is a procedurally generated Tea Garden star in Space Engine specifically, and here we have a few planets around it. All of them were procedurally generated, and some of them are actually very similar to planet Earth, like for example this one. Uh, in terms of mass at least, it's very close to planet Earth. As a matter of fact, there are two planets that actually fit 
the description from the paper. So even a procedurally generated simulation like Space Engine seems to suggest that uh, this particular star should have at least a couple of terrestrial or Earth-like planets. Now, let's try to recreate them using Universe Sandbox and look at their parameters, because that's really important. Um, you know, it's actually important to find out if those planets are actually interesting to us, in other words, if we could one day settle them, or if it's some kind of a hellish world where we would never be able to survive. So these two planets uh, don't have really any good names right now, they're just known as Tea Garden Star B and Tea Garden Star C. And for the most part, both of these stars seem to be located, at least to some extent, in the so-called habitable zone of the parent star. Tea Garden Star B is a little bit closer to the warmer side. In other words, um, it's not as far as Venus, but it's still close enough to have slightly warmer temperature, whereas Tea Garden C is roughly around the same distance as where Mars would be. And both of these planets um, seem to actually have relatively similar mass to Earth actually a little bit more than Earth. One is about 25% uh, more massive and the other one is about 33% more massive than our own planet. So here is roughly what all of this looks like. We have two planets, one is a little bit closer, this is the planet known as B, and one is a little bit farther away, known as C. The closest planet takes um, just a little bit under 5 days to orbit the star, whereas the farther planet takes uh, roughly around 11 days. And one important thing to notice here, just like with the other M-type stars, other red dwarfs, it's very likely that both of these planets are actually tidally locked. Now, um, that suggests that, well, maybe these two planets might be very different from Earth after all. But then again, we have examples like Venus, where the atmosphere can potentially cause the planet to have some kind of a rotation. Specifically, the retrograde rotation where a planet spins backwards. So we're not 100% sure that these are tidally locked, but they could be. Now, um, one other thing to notice here is that uh, without any atmosphere, without any actual greenhouse gas effect here, um, the temperature on the closest planet is already pretty warm. It's roughly around 15 degrees Celsius here. And so it really depends on the size of the planet. If this planet, for the most part, is metallic, if it's very high in density, in other words, let's say it has a huge metal core and so its size is much smaller, it will actually receive much less radiation and thus become cooler and will thus have a higher chance of being terrestrial and Earth-like. At the same time, by having a large metallic core, it may also have very high magnetic field, protecting this planet from all sorts of radiation coming from the star itself. But at the same time, if this object is for the most part ices and water or even gases, uh, in other words, if it's some kind of a gigantic super earth, in that case, it will definitely be much hotter. Specifically, it will probably be some kind of a boiling super earth with a very large uh, liquid ocean or potentially very large uh, gas-like atmosphere. And so it's not going to be a very interesting habitable planet, but it's still going to be interesting to look at. So for this closest planet, the actual density means a lot, but we're not going to be able to see its density until we're able to take a look at the actual planet and determine its radius. Unfortunately for us, this planet doesn't really come in front of the star, so we are unable to see its true radius. We're going to have to determine it in some other ways. Nevertheless, though, um, considering the actual parameters we've discovered about this planet so far, and also considering the distance from the star and other um, factors, this object right here currently has one of the highest so-called Earth similarity indices. That's the value that we often use to try to find out if an object is similar to Earth in some way, or if it's um, different in some important parameter, like for example distance from the star, or the actual mass or radius. Now, for this object, so far, this is one of the highest. I'm going to talk about the highest we've discovered so far in another video, but um, this is really close to 100%. According to the scientists, I believe it's roughly around 94%. So that is, um, so far, one of the highest we've discovered. Now, what about the other planet? Well, the other planet is a little bit farther away, um, and because of this, it's more Mars-like, and it's actually very close to Mars in its Earth similarity index as well. It's roughly around 80%. But once again, depending on the actual uh, composition, this could potentially be a water world as well, 
or even uh, some kind of a habitable world with enough temperature here to sustain um, viable conditions for human life. But for this object, it will all depend on the atmosphere as well, and of course on the greenhouse gases that might be present here. If it has a lot of greenhouse gases that could warm up the surface, it could definitely have something like this. It could be a very viable world, it could be a habitable world, and it could even be an inhabited world already. Which is really interesting because at the end of this paper, the scientists even speculated that if there is any kind of extraterrestrial life on these worlds, they will likely for them be able to even see our own planet Earth passing in front of our sun starting in 2044. In other words, if the Tigardians, as the authors of this paper refer to them, look at our sun, they'll be able to see our planet pass in front of the sun and thus analyze it and look at it in the same way that we look at planets and discover them using telescopes like, for example, Kepler. And I thought it was very interesting for them to end the paper with that because there's definitely a lot of hope that we'll, one day we'll discover some kind of alien life somewhere else. But at the same time, um, there's maybe even hope that they'll discover us. In case of this particular star system though, because it's so close to us, it could potentially be one of those objects that we need to investigate even further. Um, a couple of years ago, we discovered Proxima b, which was the closest um, terrestrial or Earth-like planet to us at a distance of just over four light years. This one is not far off. This is only about three times as distant. And the most incredible part about this particular star system is that it has two very Earth-like planets, one a little bit closer than Earth, one a little bit farther than Earth. So if one doesn't work out, maybe the other one will. And the other really important fact about this star system is that, unlike other red dwarfs, Tea Garden star is actually pretty old. It's roughly around 8 billion years old, meaning that it's no longer really that active. It doesn't really produce as many super flares or even regular flares anymore, and so these planets that are um, orbiting around it have a very high chance of developing atmospheres, developing liquid water, and obviously maybe even some sort of primitive or potentially advanced life. So these two planets are extremely important and their discovery is probably one of the most groundbreaking discoveries of 2019. Personally, I'm definitely looking forward to what we discover about these objects and the follow-up studies that might even be able to somehow see their atmosphere and analyze them a little bit more. For now though, that's really all we know about Tea Garden stars. You can check out the paper in the description below and uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to keep up with further updates. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and wants to learn more about the universe and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. And also maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.